Well, welcome. It's Painkiller Fridays. We're here live on North Forest Beach at Pool Bar Gyms. Yeah. I have a very special guest today, the island's man of the people, yeah. our very own Matt Stock. How are you, Matt? I'm good. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. It's Painkiller Fridays. Painkiller so, Fridays. I'm excited to be here because, you know, I've seen you doing this Painkiller Friday thing. Started out socially, like you and uh, like Bob Meyer coming up here on Fridays. Yes, that's right. And now you're doing this this format, which is cool. But before you started doing this video, me and a couple of my buddies were like, well, how do we get in on Painkiller Friday? Can we invite ourselves? Should we just show up up there and act like, oh, Tristan, Bob, good to see you guys. Well, you know, here, it's, so. it's interesting you say that, but I had a little <laughs> secret list of people I wanted on it. And at the very top of the list was Matt Stock. Not only because you're just a great guy, but you're well, so thanks, involved babe. with the South End. Yeah. You know what's going on. If, if I need to know what's going on on South End of Hilton Head, live music wise, whatever, I know you've got your finger on the pulse. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we had to have you on here. I like to draw cool stuff to people's attention that I think sometimes we'll get a short shrift or there's always so much going on around here from entertainment, food and beverage standpoint, things can slip through the cracks, you know? So there's some little buried treasure here like, oh, you know, check this band out, come see this thing we're doing at the theater, try this soup out at this restaurant, it's great. It could be, it could be anything, you know? Yeah. But it's well, just you, cool, it's cool to share with everyone to get the word out. When, when I look at it, I've worked on this road now, the corridor from Palmetto Bay onto Pope Avenue, sure. Forest Beach area. I've worked on this road for about 25, 30 years. And this just kind of struck me that really, there hasn't really been a personality like you this whole time that really bridges the mm -hmm. younger 20, 30 crowd and our age, the 40, 50 crowd. You've got involved in two or three really cool things. Yeah. The, the thing that I uh, really admire about you is bringing the Caligny Theatre back to life. Let's talk about the history of the Caligny Theatre and what do you got going on over there? I mean, Hilton Head's oldest theatre, uh, you know, it's historic. Uh, opened, it, I believe, in 1969. 69, right yeah, over there yeah. in the plaza. Some of their first structures over there, and uh, it's gone through its ups and downs over the years. Uh, a big heyday back in the 90s. You right. know, I hear so many stories about people that grew up going to that theater, and I, I grew up right near a theater in my hometown of Pennsylvania that was so similar right. to the Clayton Theater that it resonated with me from a nostalgic standpoint. When I was given the opportunity, along with Cranford, with John Cranford, my partner, to get in there and try some things out, sort of bring it back to prominence, yeah. I, was, I was like, you really couldn't say no. Yeah, no, I mean, it's really, I think the Caligny Theater holds a special place. Yeah. And a lot of the locals that have been around here a long time, I went, I, I remember seeing the Prince of Tides there. Um, it just, it's got a special feel when you walk through the doors. Yeah. But what I like about what you're doing is you've given it another purpose. You're doing some different events, which allows it to continue as a successful operation, right? You've got some live music and some other things going on. What's, I, what's I, coming up? I'd say, the, I'd say the main ripple that we created in sort of changing the culture of the theater is bringing it, looking at it as a performance venue. Right. Uh, we have so much talent here. Obviously, you got a 200 seat auditorium right. that's set up you know, for sound and for entertainment. Nice high ceiling. And yeah, with, you know, with, with John's efforts and some other people, we've been able to start doing shows piecemeal here and there where we've gotten to a point now where I think we can offer, you know, two, like two good live events. Yeah. A month, you know, um, some friends of uh, mine and myself have brought a comedy ripple into it. Right. So we started a little local stand-up scene that's been doing well. And, um, you know, and we, we host repertory film and um, just a lot of different things. So, I mean, even this month we were just discussing uh, Mountain Film on tour. I went to that, uh, I went to that, I think it was the first one. That was an incredible yeah, experience two, for me. Yeah, two to years come, ago. To come to that little theater in Caligny that we're all used to seeing a little movie in there. And, You've got this special event going on. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Well, Mountain Films is a, a company based in, uh, in Telluride, Colorado. Right. Uh, they choose, they handpick uh, short films that focus on ecology, uh, awareness, nature, uh, adventure sports, and they all have good inspirational, positive messages. They're handpicked because they're extremely well filmed. They have fantastic music, fantastic photography. That It's actually so good that, if you recall, at the last live screenings, I mean, especially some like the adventure sports stuff really resonates with people. People right. start to cheer and, oh. you know, everyone walks out of this event sort of elevated and yeah. you learn something too along the way. Yeah, it's, it's kind of giving Hilton Head, some, events like that give Hilton Head like an extra, I don't know, level of uh, authenticity as far as, right. you know, we're not just a beach town. We've got stuff that's no, really no. good to do. It's, so one of the other cool things you did that um, I think you were probably there a couple of times we came in there, you did some classic movies. Yes. And uh, I think last year I came by and saw Jaws and maybe Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. That was really cool to go in an old theater like that on Hilton Head and, uh, you know, just kind of floods back memories and you give, you're giving the people something unique and it's a great night out are you guys going to keep going with stuff like yeah, that yeah i definitely i definitely will it's a two-pronged thing it's for it for for some people it cashes in on the nostalgia thing like oh i remember seeing pulp fiction the date came out with my right. buddies in college straight right. to the theater first show they're also a lot of younger 
you know, film I've enthusiasts them, right? that have never had a chance to see these movies on a giant screen right. with great sound, like Jaws right. or Halloween or just the, the 2001, like all these all these niche movies, genre movies that uh, people really show up for and they really enjoy them. So you're a bartender. You're a South End food and beverage experience yeah. guy. That's um, in the know. You're working at my old bar, which is now Cool Cats. Yeah, Cool um, Cats. Lounge. I'm glad that you guys are over there doing such a great job. It's kind of had its ups and downs the last it has. ten years. Yeah. Um, but it seems like it's almost on the high of the money penny stage. You guys well, have got some live music in there. Great bartenders. The vibe's always been great. Well, listen, I mean that's the template. That's the goal. You know, when we got in there and started making some changes, and uh, I'm, I'm interested in culture change. I like the challenge of it. Uh, I'm doing it with my best friends too. Right. You know, but the, the, the guidepost for us was Money Pennies, of course, you know, your original location. So when we started, I knew we started to turn the corner when I'd see customers come in that are more in our age group right. saying, like, oh, this feels like Money Pennies again. Yeah. And then when you came in and said, this feels like Money Pennies again, I was like, all right, it, you know, we're on the right track. The, it, like, it's yeah. certainly, you guys have got it. And, you know, I was so happy to hear you put cornbread in there on New Year's Eve. Yes. You weren't scared to charge a cover charge because we want our musicians to get paid. Yeah, that was and people paid, and it was a successful night all the way around. Party. And you yeah. had a great night. From oh, what, fantastic! What yeah, here. absolutely, so absolutely. That's awesome. So, since this is a real estate show, we have to switch over and have a little conversation about real estate. One of the things I felt like you could help me out with is your perspective on the challenges our food and beverage community are being yeah. faced with housing, because it's a real issue, isn't it? It's a very real issue, and I'm glad that you suggested that we talk about that because, as far as you know, real estate goes, it's probably. I can't speak on this with much, much authority, but I can speak on it from experience. And right now, we're facing obviously an affordable uh, housing crisis. Certainly. Not only even on this island, but bluffed in the low country in general. Yeah. Uh, and it's, and it's probably the, across the country, but we've yeah. got to figure it out. Yeah, well, you know, the uh, property values went up so much here, so many people sold. Yep. And uh, it hasn't hit me personally yet, and I'm grateful for that, but I have so many friends that are. I mean, basically de facto homeless, you know, they're able to go stay with other people for a few months, you know, people that have spare rooms and everything. Um, this is by no, this is no situation. It's not by virtue of someone being lazy or lacking motivation. These people work hard. It's they just have nowhere to go, jobs. right? They have plenty of money. Yeah. They can't find any. There is nothing that the, the Hilton Head real estate market is so hot right yeah. now that anything that was affordable that an owner could rent out and make a little bit of money on mm -hmm. or cover his nut. Those options have gone. These guys have sold out because the prices have gone so high. It's skyrocketed, so, yeah. So now we're looking at a situation where a lot of the working people on Hilton Head have nowhere to live here. Yeah. And there's plenty of jobs in Bluffton and beyond. And how do we maintain a workforce? And, um, you know, the town has an opportunity here to jump on this. We have a lot of commercial properties on Hilton Head that are there sitting are. empty. Let's use the Sam's Club building, for example. Yeah. That thing's been empty probably for three or four years now. I mean, we've got to start using these empty spaces. The town has to get involved. They've got all this land because otherwise the people that live on this island are not going to have the things to do that they love to do because we're not going to have the employees. I think the wall that we need to break down is that, you know, if I've gotten somewhat involved in the situation. I still have a lot to learn, but for me, it's like if I, anything that I want to do for this community, that's my number one really? cause. And I think when this discussion comes up, so many of us can name these sort of locations that are vacant, that are yeah. such as large spaces. And you hit a wall right away because whoever you're discussing with says, oh, well, that's a zoning issue. The whole building has to be rezoned. It might have to be taken down. It might have to be rebuilt. When, let's start, you know? At least and something it's, it's easy aggressive. For me to say that. And, it, and it takes more work to do that, but it's something that I really, really want to educate myself about. And I want to share that with other people too, because it's absolutely crucial that we improve the housing situation. It's crucial for the existence of Hilton Head as we know yes. it. And especially a lot of the rich cats on this island that enjoy the amenities that we have sure. they could disappear if we yeah. don't have some aggressive action and i believe it's going to take the intervention of the town to do something that's gonna it starts with the town solve this problem and it's yeah. going to have to be solved very quickly because it is a real issue and you know the op there's there's plenty of things we can do i mean there's plenty of things we've actually we're actually a very big island and we've got a lot of space on this island we're the second largest island on the east coast and there's not a lack of land we, the town owns a lot of land. There's a lot of defunct areas, the commercial Many, areas, yeah. that we could put thousands of people in accommodations, and but they're sitting empty. And I don't want to see another storage unit complex on Hilton Head <laughs> Island. That makes my blood boil because then we take the life and soul out of Hilton Head. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think there's a lot of people that are proactive 
that are a little bit younger that really want to start to initiate change on this right. island. So it starts with that. So I just, you know, well, through the, through the South Center magazine, you know, over the past couple of years, we've been involved with covering some town hall stuff. And sometimes we agree with them, sometimes we don't. That's fine to disagree, but instead of just staying at disagreement, I think people really got to start talking about stuff. I know some other people around the island have drawn up plans and proposals, so I think it's one that we got to we're going to start focusing on a little bit more. Well, I so. always enjoyed that, and good luck on your sold-out comedy shows coming up in Bluffton. Yeah, roasting fastest room. fastest sellout in roasting room history. Is that correct? He said it, not me, but that it's true. That is yeah. <laughs> an unbelievable accomplishment because he was going up against Jevin who had some incredible sellouts over there. We used, I love going over there, it's a great room. Yes, I think it it's gonna be a great show. Unfortunately, I don't have a ticket, so uh, you know, I'm just gonna to have to hear the stories. I'll talk, I'm talk, I'll talk to some people. You talk to we'll Jordan for me? Yeah, me yeah, yeah we'll talk to some people. All right, man, well, thanks for meeting me today. Thank you very Appreciate much for having time. me, man. I appreciate you, it's a pleasure. Take care, guys. Thanks, guys.